Now the other day I was doing a class on power generation and I got to thinking if maybe I should do a class, maybe I should do a video on uh, batteries because the batteries is what starts the generator just like the battery you have in your car. So let me ask you this. First of all, what is this right here? That happens to be the symbol for a cell. Just a single cell, you have the negative side, you have the positive side right here. There's your cathode, that is your anode. When you have this, now this becomes a battery because you have several cells that are hooked up in series like this. Now typically these cells are gonna be 2.1 volts. That's the voltage on a cell. So in a car, we end up with three, four, five, six. So in a car, typically we we'll multiply 2.1 times six, we're gonna end up with 12.6 volts. That's the voltage that your fully charged battery should have. Typically people say 12 volts, but it's not 12 volts. It should be the 12.6. Now, let me ask you this other question. In your, in your battery, like in your car, for example, it's like this. We have the connection up here on top, and this is gonna be your negative. This is going to be your positive right here. But what is inside of a battery? What do we have in a battery? Well, most people will say, well, you have some liquid in there. Okay, so that's absolutely correct. We're gonna have this much liquid in there. When we have that much, we're going to be what they call 100% full, okay? Also, along with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have lead plates. We're gonna have these plates right here. Now, it's not just lead because we have a negative side and a positive side. So the negative side is gonna be PBO2. The negative side will be PBO2. The positive side plates are gonna be PV. And along with all of that, you're gonna have what they call electrolyte solution. You're gonna have electrolyte, and that's what this is right here. Now, what makes up the electrolyte solution? The electrolyte solution is gonna be made up of 64% H2O and it's going to be a total of 36% sulfuric acid. It's going to be sulfuric acid. That's what we're going to have in there. So 36% sulfuric acid, 64% H2O. I'm not saying water. I'm saying H2O because this has to be pure water. Where are we going to get pure water? It is distilled water. That's what we're going to have in there. So what happens here as the battery is being used, as we're draining the battery, we're gonna move the electrons from the negative to the positive like this. Now when that happens and we move more and more electrons, the 36% of acid is going to diminish. We're gonna have less acid in there. We're still gonna be at 100% full, but you're gonna have, the percentage is gonna be less of acid and you're gonna have more of the H2O. And that creates a problem because now your, your solution is not as strong as it should be. Your electrolyte solution has gotten weak. Because of that, the specific gravity is going to change. Now, we're not going to have time to get into the specific gravity, but that's one of the ways that we can test the battery by a hydrometer by checking the specific gravity. Or you can just, like they have nowadays, you just you know, plug those testers in and it will tell you if your battery is good or bad. But basically what's happening is it's telling you what the mixture is of this right here. How much sulfuric acid and how much water you have. Now, when we drain it, like I said, when the battery is being used and the voltage is being drained, this is gonna drop. Because of that, your battery becomes weak. As we run the car, as you run your generator, as you charge this battery, what happens is we put a charge right back into the battery. Because we're putting a charge into it, then we go ahead and end up with a 36% acid again and 64% H2O. So a fully charged battery, even though it may be, let's say, two, three years old, you're still going to have these percentages if your battery is fully charged. And like I said, it's going to be 12.6 volts fully charged. Now, at some point, they tell you, you need to add 
water to the battery. Okay, why? Well, because as we charge this battery, what happens, we're putting electricity into it. And when we put electricity into it, what happens is we're gonna break the, we're gonna break this into hydrogen and into oxygen. Because of that, we're going to get a little bit of hydrogen coming out and we're gonna get some oxygen coming out. Because we're breaking it apart, now the level is gonna drop eventually. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you need for a fire? What do we need for a fire? Well, we need three things. We're gonna need fuel, oxygen, and heat. Three things, fuel, oxygen, and heat. So now we have the hydrogen, we have the oxygen, hydrogen is the fuel, we have the oxygen, and if someone comes in and creates a spark, or if someone comes in smoking, then what's gonna happen is you're going to have a fire, exactly. So we have to be very, very careful around batteries that are charging. That's why you get that smell sometimes when you're charging batteries because you're smelling the hydrogen and you're smelling the oxygen leaving there. And that's what tends to happen with these batteries. Now, the other thing too is that nowadays they have what they call the maintenance-free batteries. Well, with the maintenance-free batteries, they say you're not supposed to add water to it, but still, when you charge it, you have the hydrogen and the oxygen leaving. So that means that you're still gonna to need to add water to it. A lot of times if you take that little sticker on top of the battery off, you peel it back, you can see the plugs underneath there where you can add water to it. And you wanna make sure that you add what kind of water? Only distilled water. You don't want to add tap water, you don't want to add any other kind of water, Perrier or whatever, in there. You just want to add the H2O, distilled water. Because if you add regular water in there, regular water is going to be a conductor. H2O, or distilled water, is going to be an insulator. If you add water that has minerals in it, what you're going to do is you're going to create a path between the negative and the positive plates. And when that happens, you're draining your battery. You're discharging your battery internally. That's why you don't want to do that. Because regular tap water has minerals in it, and that creates that path, destroys your battery. So you wanna make sure that you only add H2O to that. Now, let's get back to the batteries. They also have these other batteries that are truly maintenance free. The reason is because they have a gel in them, but they're very, very expensive. If they are gel batteries, gel filled batteries, then you don't have to add anything to them. They will last you for a long, long, long time, but they're very, very expensive. So now, if you want to spend that money, that's fine and that's great. You don't have to worry about any of the maintenance. But if you have just a regular battery, then yes, at some point, the water level may drop and you're going to have to add H2O. Some of you have probably seen the ones that have the little side glass on them that is supposed to be green. Well, when it's not green anymore, then the battery is no good. What that is, it is, it has a little float inside as the level drops, then you can't see the green anymore. So to cure that, what would you do? Add H2O. When you get a chance to take a look at your battery, most, even though they are maintenance free, most of those batteries will have a place where you can add the water, you can check the water level. I have done that with some of my cars, but anyway, I wanted to talk about this on the batteries. There's a lot more to talk about. Maybe I will do another video where we talk a little more about maintenance and what to check on batteries and stuff. But I hope this helped. And like I said, this is the same type of battery that you have in your car or in your emergency diesel generators at work. Again, my name is Julio, American Academy. Please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and follow me on Facebook and check out my webpage, airconacademy.com. If you have any suggestions for videos that you would like to see me do, please send them to me, send me the suggestions, and I'll try to get them out to you, all right? Thank you very much.